just because you're okay with talking to the sisters and you have a sense of comfort dealing with them, that's, that's not bad or, or wrong in and of itself. If you feel comfortable looking at them in the wrong way, then that becomes a problem. Right? So you can look at someone and it's like looking into the face of your sister, looking into the face of you know, a cashier at a grocery store. It's a, very, it's a, it's a casual, normal uh, interaction. And that's fine. It's a comfortable interaction. And that's fine. But then there's a different look. And that's actually in the Quran when it says to lower your gaze. It doesn't just say lower your gaze. It says the word that's used is min. So it's lower from your gaze. And the scholars say that this refers to, the, the, that, I mean, this indicates that all of the gaze is not prohibited, just a specific part, which is to look at someone in an inappropriate manner, or to look at something that is forbidden to look at in the first place. So if the sisters you're dealing with, you're looking at them but, while you're talking to them, but again, you're not doing so with that particular, you know, um, lustful look, then that should be fine. Um, inshallah. But some of the scholars have also mentioned that it's good to uh, lower your gaze, not uh, like preemptively. So even if you're not attracted to the sister, even if uh, her out is covered, doesn't mean you have tunnel vision, which is what I see a lot of people trying to do and what I used to do myself. Um, actually, when my husband and I were interacting in the MSA um, when I was in college, nobody knew we were talking to each other because of how far we stood and how we were looking in opposite directions. It was the most awkward thing on earth. And that is not what Islam is like. So um, literally in passing period, people would walk through us because they didn't know that we were having a conversation. That's how distant we were and how awkward we were, not even facing each other to, to deal with MSA things. So that's not necessarily like the paradigm we're trying, that's not healthy, right? Uh, and you can only imagine how problematic that is for someone that you're trying to introduce Islam to in terms of the greater community and society that you're in. Um, so th this is my advice is, it's, you know, it's okay to be comfortable, but it's not, it's to, to guard yourself from getting too comfortable, not just in like to the extent that you would start to look at them in the wrong way, but also in speech. That's actually, I think, where m more people would mess up initially is you get comfortable, so then you start talking about like all sorts of different things and you start, people get into their personal lives and like matters that really have nothing to do with MSA. Um, and so just, you know, the, having a formal friendship, the way that you would maybe deal with people at a company, right? Um, if you go to work, it's considered like tab, or it's considered like not good work ethic or work manners to talk about your personal life, for example, at work. Um, so just keeping some of these things in mind, uh, where you don't get so comfortable, where your speech can take you to places that it shouldn't take you, and it's a slippery slope. So when you start to see, you know, certain areas open up too easily, then that's that's kind of where you pull yourself back. Um, a nice indication that one of the scholars mentioned about our overall place with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because this is where Hayat comes from, is um, when we are making mistakes in the way we deal with the creation of Allah and in the way that we're dealing with Allah Himself, we actually start to see prayer and worship as being more difficult. But when we're dealing with the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala really from a paradigm of loving Allah and being considerate for His creation, then we yearn to worship. We love to pray. We love to go to prayer. So a good sort of overall measurement of like, is the way I'm dealing with people okay is, well, do I want to love, do I want to worship my Lord? Do I love the idea that it's time to pray? Or is it something I'm turning away from? Or I feel like it's heavy right now. If it's heavy, then maybe there's something in our behavior that lacks dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.